Welcome to the 8th session on Fundamentals of Computers. I'm Manipushan Disouza, and in today's class we are going to look at the axiomatic definitions of Boolean algebra. So today we are going to look at some of the axioms that are defined in the Boolean algebra. This Boolean algebra was developed by George Boole. This Boolean algebra defines the structure consisting of a set of k elements and the two operation namely the plus and dot. So let's consider two elements x and y that belongs to a set B. According to the Huntington postulates, following postulates are satisfied for a Boolean algebra. So let's look at each and every postulates that are defined in the Boolean algebra. First, let's start with the operator plus. This operator plus is closed with respect to the set that we are talking about. Suppose if you have two elements, x and y, and if you operate the operator plus on these two elements that belong to the set B or set K, whatever you take it as, then we take it as set K as such. Okay, so if X Y belongs to the set K, then uh, if you operate on this uh, X and Y, then the result of X and Y, that is the let's call it as Z, will also belong to the set K. That means to say that if you have a set here. And if you take any two element, say x and y, and you operate the x and y on these two elements, the result that you are going to get, if uh, let's call it as z, if you get a result of z, then this z will also belong to the same set. That is why it is called as closed. That means to say that by applying an operator, on these two elements you cannot go out of this set you will be there within the same set what about uh, the dot operator the dot operator is also closed so what is the meaning of that again the same old thing you have a set with the two elements say x and uh, y if you operate x dot y then if you get a answer say z then this z must belong to the same set that means by applying an operator dot it is not possible for you to go out of this set you will be there within the set that is what is called as a closed set so it is like uh, if you if somebody has locked you inside a room by applying a dot operator you can't come out of that room you will be there inside uh, uh, a, a room. So suppose somebody has locked you inside a room and with the one door over here. Now whatever you do, whatever circus you do, you can come out of this room. So by applying any operator on any two elements, you can't come out of that thing. So in, in this case, by applying the plus and the dot operator, you cannot come out of that room. So that is why it is called as closed. These two operators are closed. Now let's look at uh, one other postulate and that is the element 0. So element 0 is the identity. Remember we have only two elements. In, the, in fact uh, we are talking about um, two elements here which are 0 and uh, 1. If you apply the dot I mean uh, the plus operator and if you take a element one of the element as uh, 0 then you get back the same element so it is like as I've already told you in the previous video if you want to know yourself so how I look like if I want to see then what I'm supposed to do is I am supposed to stand in front of a mirror so if I stand in front of a mirror, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to see myself. So in the same way, if the element uh, X says, who am I? I want to see myself. So how can you show 
uh, x to itself it naturally you have to place the x in front of the mirror but we don't have a mirror here so that uh, it can get the uh, its own reflection and say that okay this is what i am but that's not possible here because we are talking about the boolean algebra so what we can say is uh, to the x uh, x you take the operator plus and i'm going to give you an element uh, zero if you stand in front of that you will see yourself so either you stand uh, in front of the mirror or if the mirror is standing in front of you in any case you are going to see yourself so x plus 0 or 0 plus x you are going to get back the x element for any element x in the same way for the dot operator element 1 is the identity so x dot 1 or 1 dot x will return you back the same element so that is the meaning of that let's look at the commutative so what is the meaning of saying commutative so if you apply x first and then y or if you apply y first and then x so if you apply x then the operator then y or you start with y then the operator and then x both of them will give the same result now that's not true uh, generally so let's say uh, you take a uh, the minus operator i'm going to give you a simple example of minus operator so if you have a, a minus 3 minus 5 so what is the answer you are going to get uh, the answer as a minus 8 now if i reverse it 5 minus of minus 3 so what is the answer <clears throat> I am going to get in this case is uh, minus of minus you know very well is uh, plus. So what is the answer you are going to get is 8 remember uh, both are not the same. Okay so if you look at this one so uh, always I have used uh, some other operator here just to tell you that always it is not true okay uh, in, in terms of all the operators. But when it comes to the plus operator and when we talk about the Boolean algebra, it is true. So if you apply x, uh, the uh, operator plus on x and y or y or and x, both of them will give you the same result. That is true even with respect to the dot operator. So x dot y or y dot x both will give you the same result. So that's why we say that they are commutative. Now let's look at uh, one other operator and that is the distributive operator. So what's the meaning of saying distributive? Suppose if you take the dot, <coughs> you can distribute it over plus. So what is the meaning of that? So if you have x dot y plus z, then it is same as you apply the dot operator first and then add it. So you write uh, x dot y first and then x dot z finally you, you add it or you can do the same old trick and that is uh, you add a y plus z first and then operate on the dot so in other words you can distribute this dot over the other operator it is uh, even true in terms of boolean algebra it may not be true in terms of the ordinary algebra but when it comes to the boolean algebra you can start with the operator plus and distribute it over dot what is the meaning of that is so you can if you have x plus y dot z then you can distribute this plus here and then you can distribute it uh, to the other one so you can write x plus y then take that dot distribute it and then x plus z it is possible in the boolean algebra <coughs> now let's look at uh, the postulate number five and that what is that postulate says there exists an element x dash which is called as a complement element such a way that if you use the plus operator with this uh, 
complement you are going to get the identity element if you use the complement with respect to the dot operator you get the identity for the dot so that's the meaning of it so if at all you want to get the identity element then uh, use the complement so if you apply x plus x dash you get the identity for plus operator x dot x uh, x bar or x dash you, you will it's going to give you the identity of the dot operator the other one is a very obvious one there must be at least two elements in the boolean algebra such that uh, two elements are not same so what do you mean by saying that is uh, uh, there if, if you have just one element you can't uh, create it so you can say repeat x 10 times and say that okay we, i have uh, uh, 10 elements all of them are x it is not so in that case you have only one element so what does uh, the boolean algebra says there must be one more element but from this element there must be one more element such way that they are not the same element there must be two different elements in other words at least there must be two elements which are different with only one element you you cannot um, do anything with the boolean algebra now if you compare this boolean algebra with the ordinary arithmetic uh, algebra then you will find that there are few differences between the ordinary algebra and the boolean algebra so if you look at this uh, uh, Huntington postulate. That's the postulate that we have seen, the six postulates that we have just seen. Now, there is no associative law, whereas uh, in terms of uh, the ordinary algebra, we have associative law. By the way, what is associative law? So, associative law is very simple. If you have uh, x plus uh, y plus z, you can write this one as x plus let me yes x plus y plus z so what you have done is uh, you have distributed it uh, so you, you have associated so x and y were associated together now what you have done is uh, y and z were associated together now what you have done is uh, x and y are associated together so the, your association if you change the associative property that means if you change the associativeness you still get the same answer so that's the meaning of it so x plus y plus z together is same as x plus y together then plus z so this is called as the associative law okay. however uh, this law actually holds good even for the boolean uh, algebra this was not defined by the huntington the next one is the distributive uh, over uh, uh, plus distributive law of, of uh, plus over the dot so if you look at this one x plus y dot z it is same as x plus y and um, uh, dot x plus z now, let me give you a simplest example. Let's see whether that is actually true in the ordinary algebra. So, let me take 2 plus 3 dot 4. So, this must be equal to, in the ordinary world, ordinary algebra, this must be equal to 2 plus 3 dot uh, 2 plus 4 so that means you have distributed it so what you've done is uh, you have distributed x plus y dot z x plus y dot z is equal to x plus y x plus y so these two dot x plus z so what is uh, this answer this is 2 plus 3 into 4 is 12. This must be equal to, this must be equal to, what is this? 2 plus 3, that is 5, dot 2 plus 4 is uh, 6. Is it not? So 2 plus 5, uh, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 2 plus 4 is 6. Is Are they same? 
So what is this um, 2 plus 12? Uh, this 3 into 4 is 12, so this is 2 plus uh, 3. So what is uh, this one? This is 14. 2 plus 12 is 14. But uh, is this uh, equal to pi into 6? So this is going to be 30. Now, you know very well that's not true. 14 is not equal to 30. So that means to say that the distributive law that we have seen, the plus over dot, is not valid for ordinary algebra. So ordinary algebra, this particular law, distributive law, does not hold good when you have plus over dot. Whereas the Boolean algebra, this postulate holds good. In next one, we will see that thing. Uh, don't worry, I have one more slide that where I am going to explain you how that distributive law actually holds good. Don't worry about that. So let's uh, proceed with the next one. Okay. Boolean algebra does not have additive and multiplicative inverses. So you can don't have um, a inverse element that will get back to the same element. So that means to say that uh, there is no subtraction or division uh, operators. Okay, that's why you don't have the additive or multiplicative inverses. So that's why you can get it. The next one is uh, the postulate 4 and 5 which are defined earlier defines the operator called as a complement operators so which is not defined in the ordinary algebra we don't have something called as a complement so uh, these are exclusive for boolean algebra the next one is the ordinary algebra deals with the real numbers whereas uh, which are infinite real numbers are in finite space whereas the Boolean algebra is defined over a finite set of elements and they are the zeros and ones. So you know, in one side we have infinite number of elements. The real numbers are infinite. So there is no end for real numbers. Whereas when we talk about Boolean algebra there is only zero and one. So this is a finite set. Now when we look at this uh, two-valued Boolean algebra with the elements zeros and ones and the two binary operator plus and dot as well as the complement operators uh, if you draw the truth table for uh, these uh, operators you find that uh, they have the similar truth table as that of the ordinary and or and not operators so let's look at uh, that one so we have only two elements Let's, let me go back here. We have only two elements that is um, 0 and 1. So with the two elements what are the possibilities uh, are there? So 2 to the power uh, 2. So two elements means uh, uh, 2 to the power 2 which means uh, there are four possibilities are there. What are these possibilities? Uh, first element is 0, second element is also 0. First element is uh, 0, second element is 1. First element is 1, second element is 0 and first element is 1, second element is also 1. What is the, what are the possible answers that you get? So 0 dot 0 is 0, 0 dot 1 is 0, 1 dot 0 is 0, 1 dot 1 is 1. What about uh, the same with the plus? 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is not 2 it is uh, 1. Remember we don't have 2 here. We have only 1 there. So in the same, uh, the next one is uh, we have a complement operator. So 0's complement is 1 and 1's complement is uh, 0. So these are uh, the way in which uh, two valued Boolean algebra can be uh, written. Okay. So the Huntington uh, postulates are valid for uh, a set of zeros and ones and uh, with the two operators plus and uh, dot. In order to say that they are valid, we have to say that they satisfy the postulates. So let's start with the first postulate and what is the first postulate says? The structure is closed with respect to both the operators. We know very well. Uh, the reason is if you take dot or uh, plus operator, you notice that uh, 
whatever operation you perform using the dot all the elements are either 0 or 1 they belong to the same set even if you apply the plus operator the answer is again either 0 or 1 which belongs to the same set so that means uh, you don't have something called as 2 if you had 2 here then this is not closed whereas but we don't have that thing so 1 plus 1 is 1 for us so that means to say that you still belong to the same set consisting of two elements you can't go out of this set so if it was 2 and 2 is not defined so you would have gone out of this um, a set altogether but that's not possible in the operation that is why we say that uh, this particular operator is closed uh, this particular uh, operator that is uh, uh, this set is closed with respect to the operator plus and naturally it is also closed with respect to the operator zero next one from the table what you see over here is one plus zero i mean zero plus zero is zero okay and 1.1 1 .1 is 1 so that uh, so if you notice uh, that one also if you apply this 0 with respect to any element okay you get back the same element okay so what is the meaning of that so if the 0 wants to know who am i i want to find my identity so if the zero ask you that question okay i don't i don't know who am i i want to see myself so what you will say stand in front of the mirror but what is the mirror here in our case mirror is zero itself if you stand in front of the mirror you get zero now what if um, one comes and says no i want to know who i am so what we will say stand in front of the mirror who is mirror here zero so you get back uh, one so this uh, thing the zero over here acts as the identity okay what about uh, the multiplicative identity multiplicative identity is uh, one so one dot one is one okay and uh, if if one says i want to see myself what uh, you will say you stand in front of one you will get it if the zero says i want to see myself with respect to the dot operator uh, then you say you stand in front of the one you will get uh, yourself so simple as that so okay the one says you can get it if the zero says uh, you can get it so same elements you are going to get it so the, that's why we say that uh, the one is the identity with respect to the dot okay now the next one is the uh, symmetry as uh, already seen here if you look at uh, the symmetry here so 1 plus 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 will give you the same you apply the first and the 0 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 you get back the same so that means to say that they are commutable a commutative law holds good what about the distributive law x dot y plus x is equal to x dot y plus x dot z this is the distributive law so you are distributing the dot operator so is it true let's look at it uh, with respect to the truth table now let's assume the three variables are there x y z uh, each variable can take a possible two values that is 0 or uh, 1 so if there are two elements how many possibilities are there possibilities are 2 to the power 3 which is uh, nothing but uh, 8 so 8 possibilities are there and uh, 8 possibilities are written over here so what are the possibilities well, the possibilities are all are 0 first element is 0 second element is 0 okay or third element is 0 next one first two elements are 0 or next two elements are zero okay our first and last elements are zero or all elements are ones so these are the possibility you can't get uh, any more possibilities so this is the only possibilities that you get now let's uh, try to find uh, the answer for uh, this one 
So we will start with the, the our postulate is uh, x dot y plus z is equal to x dot y that is this and x dot z. So let's start with the x plus uh, z I mean y plus z sorry uh, y plus z. So what is y plus z? You take this uh, y here and you take uh, the z here 0 plus uh, 0. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is uh, 1. 1 plus uh, 0 plus 1 is uh, 1 and 1 plus 0 is uh, 1 and 1 plus 1 is 1. So you get it. Now multiply it um, with uh, x here. So multiply it with the x. 0 and uh, into x plus y. This is 0 into 0. This is uh, y plus z. So this is the y plus z. You have taken this y plus z. Multiply it with the x. So 0 dot 0 is 0. 0 dot 1 is uh, 0. 0 dot 1 is 0. 0 dot 1 is uh, 0. 1 dot 0 is 0. 1 dot 1 is 1. 1 dot uh, 1 is 1. 1 dot 1 is 1. So you get that thing. Now go back to the next possibility. So what are the next possibility? You have to find the x dot uh, y. So x dot y 0 plus 0 dot 0 is 0. I'm writing it uh, for this one. 0 dot 0 is 0. 0 dot 1, 0 dot 1, all are 0 only. Okay. 1 dot 0, 1 dot 0 is 0 only. 1 dot 1 is 1, 1 dot 1 is 1. So you get that. x dot z. Let's look at the x dot um, z. So x is here and z is here. 0 dot 0 is 0. 0 dot 1 is 0. 1 dot 0, 1 dot 0 is uh, 0. 1 dot 0 dot 1 this is uh, x dot z here. Look at this one, x dot z here. So 0 dot 1 is uh, 0. 1 dot 0 is 0. 1 dot 1 is uh, 1. Okay. 1 dot uh, 0 is 0. 1 dot 1 is uh, 1. So you get uh, x. Now what we are supposed to do, so we got these two things together and which are this x dot y and x dot z you got these two here now you need to add them so add 0 plus so you are adding into 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 0 is 0 0 0 0 these are all adding same thing 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 1 is 1 now you need to compare them so compare this set with uh, this set what you notice they are identical they are identical so you notice that means to say that you get the same result okay so simple as that so distributive law holds good you can try it uh, by interchanging the plus with the dot operator but still you are going to get the same answer now let's look at the complement uh, uh, of this one so from the complement table what you notice the table that uh, I just show not here with uh, this one. So complement of 0 is 1, complement of 1 is uh, 0. So if you take that one and come back over here, so what you notice, x plus x dash, that is the complement of x dash is um, 1. So because if x is 0, 0 complement of uh, 0 is 1. Okay, 0 plus 1 is 1. If x is 1, then complement of 1 is 0. Again, 1 plus 0 is 1. x dot x bar is or x dash is 0. So x dot its complement is 0. So let's start with that. If x is 0, so 0 that is x and its complement. Okay, what is the complement of uh, 0 it is 1 so this part first one is 0 second one happens to be 1 so 1 into uh, 0 into 1 is uh, 0 what about uh, if um, the value of x is 1 
so if x is 1 then x dot x bar 1 bar so what is a uh, 1 bar 1 bar is uh, 0 so 1 dot 0 which is a uh, 0 so your postulate is uh, satisfied next one uh, postulate 6 is satisfied because um, there exist two elements which are these two elements zeros and one which are not same zero is not same as uh, the one so the last one is also uh, satisfied now the, uh, before i conclude there are few things that uh, you must uh, understand first of all two valued boolean algebra that we have seen consisting of uh, two elements that is zero and one if you apply the binary operators that is uh, dot r uh, plus they produce the exactly same result as that of AND, OR and NOT operators. So there is a similarity between this Boolean algebra and the logical gates that uh, you have studied. That is the AND gate, OR gate and uh, NOT gate. Next one, two valued Boolean algebra uh, which is defined in this section. They are also called as switching algebra. Sometimes people call them as switching algebra. The engineers call it as switching algebra because we say that if the switch is on, its value is 1. So if you have a switch, suppose if you have a, a switch here, okay, and uh, if the switch is not connected, then it is a 0 because no current will pass. If you on this switch, then current will pass, then we say that switch is on. So 0 and 1, the state is represented by either the switch is off or the switch is on. That is why we say it is switching algebra. Okay, because we just know that uh, the uh, and or and not operators, which are the basic uh, operators in the logic gates, can be obtained using uh, the, whose properties can be obtained using the boolean algebra we say that okay uh, this particular boolean algebra is also called as a binary logic okay, sometimes we call it so binary because they represent the logic operation or the logic operators or the logic gates operation that we are using in um, our day-to-day -day work that's all in this class. Thank you for your interest. We will meet again in the next class. Thank you.